All right, hello everyone. My name is Mike Ruff uh, from Becker Pumps Corporation. We're at IWF, and today I just want to touch over some of the maintenance points on our VTLF line. So this pump here, you'll see some things maybe you do or don't have. We have some additional accessories. Um, if you don't have those and that's an interest to you, what these are, just contact us. Um, it, they do benefit the pump completely. But for maintenance, today we're gonna talk about filtration. So we have a knockout filter in front is a polycarbonate housing. They're super easy to remove, but it gives you a visual of any debris that collects inside. So this is a, a good representation of how much debris can end up in here and it can fill fully before you need to remove it. On top of the policing filter, we have an integrated filter that comes standard on all of our pumps. And this filter can do both the main line or the relief air. It's actually doing the relief air regardless. To, to get inside, it's super easy. There's four of these black hand knobs. All we do is take those off. Once you remove the polycarbonate enclosure, it's very durable, sturdy. You'll see that there's a large two micron air filter inside. So you always wanna make sure this one's nice and clean. You can blow it out frequently, but you do wanna exchange these if they become too overloaded. The pump itself, you'll see there's two muffler stacks on top. This, this stack here closest to your intake is the relief air. So when this pump's under full vacuum, this valve right here will open up, it draws cool air in to sweep the heat out. So it does not overheat. You don't have thermal expansion inside causing a complete failure. This little hockey puck looking device here is our cyclonic filter. There's no cartridge inside. It's just a fan that spins. This fan, when it's spinning, because the relief valve is drawing, it does eject any debris that could be pulled in directly down away from the internal air filter. Inside of this chamber, you'll see that there are two push fittings here. This is where you would then grease your pump. Every pump comes standard with one of our push guns. We just pop the top. You'll apply it against the push fitting and you just give it the appropriate amount of uh, pumps that your specific model requires. Inside we have an internal, it's standard non-return valve. And then if we come to the back here, I'll show you how to service the veins. So on the back, there's an air guide cover. There will be four five millimeter bolts here that you remove. Once you do that, this cover comes off. Behind that, you can then see the end shield and the bearing housing. There will be a series of hex head bolts here that you remove and you'll take two of the screws that you remove from the air guide cover and you'll see that there's some threaded holes here. When you put those in, it would then freeze the end shield away. Then you can inspect the, the B side bearing, see if there's damage or if the grease needs to be reapplied. Um, look for any signs of contact here. There will be black marks on here. That's perfectly normal. That is the vein dust. So the, the veins themselves, this is what creates the vacuum. The vein is a carbon resin composite. It's a special blend that we've designed specific for our pump. Um, it prevents it from, it, it lubricates the pump so we don't have to use oil. It's, um, it's almost a carbon. So it, it does wear down as it spins, but it needs to. It creates a tightness, reduces friction. And then the other really nice part is if these break for any reason, you can open the pump up, blow it out, put a new set in, and you can be up and running within 15, 20 minutes at most. Um, and, and your downtime is significantly reduced. So when we, we take the veins out, you'll see one side of them is beveled. You just wanna ensure that this bevel lines back up flush with the housing before you reactivate the pump. When we do an inspection, you're gonna use micrometers or, or calipers you're going to measure the height. So the vein is wearing from the bottom up and there is a limit on how small this vein can reduce to. On the pump itself, there's a maintenance sticker. It comes with, with every single one. You'll wanna find your model on here and it match directly to the millimeter length that this is allowed to wear to. Once, once you determine, I need to exchange, put the new set in, Make sure everything lines back up properly. The bevel is facing the housing. 
then you'll reassemble everything. When we put the end shield back on, you'll note that there's two guide pins. You want to make sure those line back up in the, the holes that they originally came out of. Once they're secure, you can tighten it back down. Those guide pins will set your rotor to housing tolerance. So if they're not lined back up properly, that rotor can contact internally. Outside of that, you just want to blow off any debris, put everything back together, and you're completely done. Service is very simple on these pumps, and you want to look at the proper PM schedule of your model to match how frequently you need to do this. And that is it.